Welcome back to our channel, where we dive into the world of finance and entrepreneurship. Today, we're tackling a topic that's crucial for anyone looking to invest in or launch a startup, new venture valuation. So what makes valuing new ventures so unique? And how can you get it right? Let's break it down. Valuing a new venture isn't like valuing an established business. Higher risks, greater uncertainties, and the potential for exponential rewards make it a whole different ballgame. Let's explore why. New ventures face higher risks and uncertainties. Think about it. There's no proven track record, and the market might react unpredictably. But the potential rewards? They can be huge. This is why option values are key. And unlike mature companies, the exit strategy, whether it's through an IPO or acquisition, is often more critical than ongoing profitability. So how do you value these high-risk, high-reward ventures? There are a few main approaches discounted cash flow or adjusted present value, the venture capital method, and real options. Let's break these down. Adjusted present value APV is often preferred over the traditional weighted average cost of capital WAF method because it offers flexibility in dealing with complex capital structures and varying tax shields, which are common in new ventures. Here's how it works. One, calculate free cash flows FCF for an all equity firm. Two, Discount these FCFs at an all-equity discount rate. Three, calculate terminal value using a perpetuity model. Four, value tax shields separately. Five, determine equity value by subtracting the market value of debt. By breaking it down like this, APV helps us capture the unique financial dynamics of a startup. Next up is the venture capital method. This approach is pretty intuitive. Start by forecasting sales or earnings, estimate when the VC will exit, and value the company based on comparables. The trick here is the high discount rates, sometimes between 25 cent to 80%, which account for the additional risks. Take VictorLungTD.com, for instance. With forecasted earnings of $100 million and a 50% discount rate, the pre-money value comes out to $8.2 million, giving the VC a 38% equity stake. So why are these discount rates so high? It's not just about systematic risk. VCs invest in illiquid assets, add significant value beyond just money, and often have to correct for overly optimistic forecasts. Plus, the power dynamics between VCs and entrepreneurs can drive valuations. An alternative to high discount rates is scenario analysis. By modeling different scenarios, you get a better grasp of the risks and can make more informed decisions. This method is all about flexibility, adapting as new information comes in. Valuing new ventures is as much an art as it is a science. With the right methods, you can navigate the complexities and make informed decisions. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for more in-depth finance content. See you in the next one.